It's really important for us uh, from Young Workers Committee to be out here and stand in solidarity. Um, we know this is that Trump's attack, you know, it's not just an anti-immigrant uh, attack on immigrants and refugees from across the border, it's an attack on working people. And, you know, both those things are, are reasons that we need to be out here standing in solidarity as young workers. So, we're a committee of the Milwaukee Area Labor Council, of workers, uh, trade unionists, under 40, union activists. And um, we, re we recently released a statement, I think last week, in solidarity with the 800,000 federal workers who are being held hostage, as Bella said. They're being held hostage by this president over this racist border wall policy. Ooh. And he's, he's thrown these workers under the bus because, first of all, he's a billionaire who doesn't care about working people and will do anything to lie and and take advantage of working people from any country in order to get his racist border wall. Second, his border wall is a pivotal piece in his anti-immigrant and anti-worker agenda as a whole. This is what he ran on. You know, he's already changing his story about who's going to pay for it and whatever, but the important thing is that this wall is what he's using to divide working people against each other. He's That's using right. he's using the wall as a distraction to say that um, right. that it's immigrants from across the border are the are the problem. Or you know, we hear politicians saying that um, all of our problems, you know, with Trump come from Russia and you know the reason wages are low is because there's immigrants from Latin America coming over. These things are a diversion. The problems with the United States come from the United States. They come yeah, from the rich. Yeah, People yeah, like yeah, Trump. Yeah. Donald Trump is the embodiment of the cause of those problems. Ain't that the truth? So his wall is a diversion really from himself as the cause of the problems of all working and oppressed people. So there, these 800,000 workers that are being held hostage, you know, it's, it's, um, it's tragic what he's doing to them. Uh, you hear the stories every day. If you go on Twitter, you can look up the hashtag shutdown stories and read these heart-wrenching stories of, you know, dedicated public servants who provide important services for, you know, mostly poor and working people. Um, by the way, most of these workers are union brothers and sisters. And don't think that Trump doesn't know that. And, and you know, that comes into consideration when, when he's thinking about, you know, these, these people going without wages and going without pay and potentially not being able to make their rent and being foreclosed on. Uh, we had a, a union sister from AFGE, a federal government workers, speak at the Milwaukee Area Labor Council delegate meeting last night, and she was telling her story and saying if, um, under federal law, if this shutdown continues to the 31st day, federal government employees are going to face a reduction in force. That means people are going to, some people will be chosen to lose their jobs permanently, to be permanently laid off. I'm sure Trump has, I, I'm sure Trump would love to do that. So we need to bring this shutdown to an end. We need to bring the wall to an end too. The quickest way that we could do that is to unite and organize working class people. If the federal workers who are being forced to work that aren't being paid actually struck and shut down uh, those service, those so-called essential services and, um, and actually shut down you know this. You know this shutdown and this wall would be killed permanently within hours. Right. But unfortunately, under the laws that are written by people like Trump and billionaires like Trump, that would ironically be illegal for the government workers to shut down the government. Although Trump, the billionaire president, can shut down the government over a demand for his racist border wall. Um, to, to us, that's a perfect illustration of this entire debacle with. Um, as far as, you know, where the power lies in this country. Yeah. So, uh, again, Young Workers Committee is here to stand in solidarity. We're here to strongly oppose the shutdown and the wall because we know that walls don't raise wages. What Trump is saying is... Right, right. Trump is saying that this wall, you know, he's trying to appeal to people who are facing difficult conditions. We've had stagnant wages for, for decades. You know, things are getting more difficult. Ours is the first generation to have it harder than our uh, parents' generation, right? Yeah. Trump is trying to appeal to that and, and say that this wall is actually going to help raise wages. We know that's a lie. The only thing that raises wages are organizing in militant unions and fighting for higher wages. That's the only way we've ever raised wages.
property taxes and then rent. So what we're here to say is we're here to build a workers' movement, a fighting workers' movement that unites across all nationalities, um, all citizenships from people, the refugees coming across the border. We welcome them into the labor movement. And we have to organize side by side with them against our common enemy in Trump. And we, we need to call for that five point what is it, $5.7 billion that Trump wants to spend on the border wall? We should be demanding that that money be spent on programs for poor and working people. Yeah. All right, so solidarity, brothers and sisters, thanks. Woo! 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 Woo